Hey there, it's Natasha and I am here today with a Coco Daisy process video. If you are brand new here, welcome. My name is Natasha and I share memory keeping process videos here on YouTube as well as I share over on Instagram regularly in regards to my creative happenings. If you are returning to my channel, welcome back. I am super happy to have you back here as I share this project with you. Now I am using the Coco Daisy Daisy Planner and I did something recently. I am going to try putting my memory planner in a ring binder. I know guys, this is crazy. I have been memory planning since 2016, 17 and it has always been on discs but recently i've had this itch to try something new so i am going ahead and giving it a shot now something that i do love about this type of planner is that there are multiple styles of layouts there is a horizontal layout and there's also a vertical and i really am enjoying mixing and matching the different layouts each week. But I also am enjoying when I get to go rogue like I am today. So I am gonna be creating a six by eight style layout on the right hand side of my weekly page. And then on the left hand side, I'm gonna be creating almost like a pocket page style layout. But I'm not gonna be putting it in a sheet protector. I'm gonna adhere it directly on to my planner pages. Now, as you can see, I'm getting quite messy over here using some distressed oxides. I am trying to repeat the watercolor slash painterly pattern that I had seen throughout the kit. I really love the colors and I just really had this kind of calling to get a little bit messy and just have a lot of fun with the supplies and the materials that I have in my stash. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the distressed oxides, they are water reactive and um, I would say water soluble. So I am adhering some of the ink onto a plastic pa packaging or piece of plastic packaging. And then I'm wetting that with a little bit of water from my spray bottle and using a paintbrush and layering that ink almost as if it was paint onto my piece of pattern paper here from the Traveler's Notebook memory keeping kit. Now I am going to be pushing this off to the side in just a moment here. I'm going to be adding some splatters as I did want to pull in some more pink into the layout which I have those colors on the other side of the page. One design technique that I like to use when I am bringing mixed media into my projects, especially memory planning, is if I am going to have a heavy mixed media style layout like I do on this on the right hand side, I want to bring that organic movement from the mixed media to the left hand side where this is very structured with the journal cards. This brings that flow and that organic energy throughout the project and it creates more of a cohesive look because there's that repeated movement and repeated pattern and softness of the watered mixed media elements. I have been using these frosted plastic storage units that I picked up at the Target dollar spot to store all of my embellishments for the month's collection at one time. So currently I have the Traveler's Notebook Keeping Kit embellishments, the planner add-on, and then I believe there was an additional um, set of embellishments in this Peach Ridge collection, those small journal cards or quote cards. And so I keep them all together and the embellishment containers are really easy to stack and then dump out like I have here. So that way I'm able to see everything and just kind of pick and choose 
what I would like while I am putting together my projects. I definitely recommend if you have the space to do something like this so that way you can maybe pick out some different uh, pieces that maybe you would have overlooked or if you're trying to work with a specific color scheme within a collection, seeing all of your embellishments out on the table can really help kind of get the juices flowing, especially if you're feeling stuck. I definitely think that's a great tip to move past that stuck feeling. For this project, I am going to be adding some stamping with the Traveler's Notebook Memory Keeping stamp set. If you don't know, the Traveler's Notebook Memory Keeping Kit comes with a stamp set for every single month. This one is adorable. I do not have a sewing machine and I always look at sewing in scrapbook and memory keeping projects and I'm always so jealous of the texture that they bring to projects. So Christine must have heard me and all of my crafty prayers and she created this stamp set that will bring that textured look of a sewing machine and the sewing you know, textures, but without actually having a sewing machine and doing the work. We can just stamp it and it looks fantastic. So I am gonna be scattering this um, stamping throughout both sides of the layout. I think often as paper crafters who are interested in state starting a project such as memory planning often get hung up on I don't take photos every day or I don't have multiple photos for a day and that is totally okay. Now this week I did not have many photos. I really had most photos from a trip that we had taken a little evening walk at the beach, but most of them were pretty mundane, um, not the most beautiful photos. So I really enjoy this kind of pocket page style memory planning layout as you're able to document the week in a fun and unique way but also not the pressure of I need to have a photo for every single day of the week you don't um, I think that there is a lot of flexibility within the Daisy Planner it does come in six month chunks and you get double of I guess you get six months I should say of the horizontal size and six months of the vertical. And even if you're not using a Coco Daisy planner at this time, you can do this in your Erin Condrid, you can do this in your Heidi Swap storyline chapters, inserts. Um, it's okay to not have a photo for every single day. With paper crafting, there are no rules. We get to make up those rules or those guidelines or no guidelines at all. I totally give you permission to throw that all out of the window if that helps um, get it started and get your memories down on the page. Now I am moving on to this six by eight style layout. I have been obsessed with this size lately and I really love how this came out. I'm actually pretty obsessed with how this one came out. I had a lot of fun with the ink and adding this mixed media background. I did not apply any gesso to the paper. I just put the ink directly on as I did want that pattern to peek through a bit. If that is not your cup of tea, that is a-okay. Uh, what you can do is apply some white gesso that would help block out the existing pattern that is on the pattern paper if that is more your jam. Now in my layering process here, I am going through the dish of embellishments that I have from the Coco Daisy Peach Ridge collection from a few of the different kits that I mentioned earlier. And what I'm doing is I'm working on balancing the color along with the shapes that I'm using. So for example, 
to have your eye travel throughout the layout. I have those half hexy shapes. So I have one at the bottom of my photo and I'm going to also pair one at the top of the photo so that your eye is diagonally going um, up and down or to the side in this layout. And additionally, if you can see in the photographs, that is also following the setting sun. So that's something that I wanted to highlight um, as we were there for sunset. So I really liked seeing that movement of, you know, the sun kind of disappearing behind the horizon line. I also, in addition to looking at the shape, I'm also wanting to balance the color. So I have that larger warm colored ampersand that I have at the bottom there and I have paired that with one of the larger embellishments uh, in that light yellow color. Now this is my PSA for every Coco Daisy process video is that the embellishments already have adhesive on them. All you have to do is peel the backing off and they are ready to go. So don't forget that no matter what type of die cut it is, they do have that adhesive back for you for Coco Daisy. So um, make sure you don't do what I've done in the past and add glue to it. <laughs> um, well, I guess you could have double adhesive at that point. Now that I've got my embellishments set up, I am going to go ahead and add my photos along with a few other little embellishments here at the top. Now I have a lot of uh, warm colors going on and something that I do whenever I have a colorful layout is bring in some uh, black ink via stamping to bring some balance and contrast to the layout. Now I, as I mentioned, I'm just obsessed with the stitching so I am going to go ahead and utilize this stamp set to bring some additional texture and some contrast with the bright colors that are in the layout. I do add a few more finishing touches and you will see in the finished photos, I do add a bit of black paint splattering through um, the whole memory planning spread as I wanted to bring more of that black and mixed media look to the layout. I super love how this came out. I did adhere this six by eight style layout right directly onto my weekly memory planner page as you will see here in these close-ups. If you enjoyed this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and if you're interested in seeing more content like this, uh, be sure to stick around. I've got some suggested videos that I think you will love. If you are interested in starting your own Coco Daisy subscription, I have a link below that will take you um, to the Coco Daisy website. If you have any questions for me in regards to my process or Coco Daisy, I would be more than happy to answer them and I try my best to get back to every comment. Thanks so much and until next time, I'll see you later.